Time to build another Zorro card for my Amiga 2000. But something that you'd maybe not think of first when thinking of Amiga expansion cards. Time to build a sound card. So this is a Prelude Zorro 2 replica. Based on the original card from ACT back in 1997. The original hardware design was by Thomas Wenzel. This card has been recreated by ALF24DE just last year in 2022 and it is open source, it's available on GitHub. And for once we have a nice and simple build. Everything on the Prelude itself, everything is through hole. There is no escaping that dreaded surface mount soldering though because we also have to build this. The Prelude m -Pegget. Not too much to do, just a little bit of surface mount work. But the beauty about this card is that this will add hardware MP3 decoding to this thing. This will eventually be mounted there. But why even bother with a sound card in an Amiga? Surely Amiga itself has outstanding sound capabilities, and that's pretty true, yes, the Paula chip in the Amiga. If you go right back to 1985, it was pretty much groundbreaking. But certainly by the time the original Prelude was released in 1997, well, just those four channels coming out of Paula that were hard panned left and right, two channels each, well, by that time, it was maybe left a little bit wanting. Now granted everything Amiga as such is going to work fine with the inbuilt sound capabilities where I'm hoping this thing will come into its own other than the MP3 capability where I'm hoping to use this is with the likes of Scum VM. I've been playing through a couple of the old DOS point and click adventures using Scum VM and while Paula does her best Things are a little bit grainy, but this card is based around a crystal chipset, not unlike what you'd find in a PC sound card. So I hope that once built, this thing will just lift the sound quality in those games to a slightly higher level. It also supports recording. We can't connect a microphone to this and record something. So if we can't get this built and can't get it working, We'll have to try that later. We'll hook up a mic and yell something into it. But I'm super excited to get this built. So let's just get stuck in. Like most of these projects, the whole idea for putting this together, well, it was a group buy from Gadget UK's Discord. And Chris has actually already put his card together. Although he's having some problems with it. He has released his first video on it. I'll link it down below. But I want to go ahead and build mine, and I suppose just to see if I'm going to have the same issues that he's having. The kits were pulled together by Sparks UK, so thank you very much for that. Everything we need is in this bag. Sparks has done his usual fantastic job of labeling everything. Over on the GitHub, there is two HTML documents that you can download, which will help you locate everything. So. Let's just get it put together. So the first thing looking on the component locator is the 100 NF capacitors. There are quite a few of those actually dotted around the board. That's these things. Let's get them in. Ceramic capacitors, so no polarity to worry about. And we may as well start at the start. C1, that goes there. One down, many more to go. I should point out that my card already has the 3.5mm jacks installed. That's because while Sparks undertook the project of ordering the board and all the components, I undertook the project of 
printing out these brackets for everyone. The bracket itself is available on the GitHub, although this is a slightly different version of it. I did modify it slightly, just made the plastic here ever so slightly thicker and added these two legs coming down onto the PCB, which are screwed into position. Just ensures that everything stays nice and solid. My version of the bracket can be downloaded from Thingiverse. You'll find a link for it in the video's description. C2. All done, so back to the component locator, and uh, next on the list is the one UEF capacitors, that's these things. Again, these don't have a polarity, so they just go in like that. But I think for these, the best thing to do would be just a little bit of blue tack. That'll just hold it in place, and just allow us to solder it on. Next one goes in there. Through hole soldering is very easy, but it just takes forever. Next up then is a couple of tantalums. One microfarad each, that's these things. And this time these do have a polarity. Now I'm not sure if it will come across on the camera or not, but down this right hand side of the tantalum, looking at it here, there is a solid line. But unlike, say, on an electrolytic, where the solid line denotes the negative lead, the solid line on these denotes the positive lead. And in fact, if you look really closely, there is a little plus symbol just in that bottom corner. Equally then on the silk screen, that's a position for one of these there, C23 for example, just at my finger there, just on the right hand side of it, there is a little plus symbol. This tantalum has to go in like that. I went ahead and fitted all the capacitors, or should I say all the capacitors I could, because we have had a slight problem. We are missing two. For position C44 and C45, we need a one microfarad cap for both of those, and they're unfortunately missing. So I have ordered some. It will take a day or two just to get here. But while we're waiting on that, let's go ahead and fit the next things from the component finder. And that is the resistors, starting with the 5.1Ks. They go in there, and there, and there. That's these things. Best thing I find to do with these is just grab the resistor in your fingers and bend the legs down. That more or less sets them exactly as they need to be. And then you can just stick them into place. That's all the resistors on, but one thing that's slightly more noticeable with these compared to, say, the capacitors, is that there, for example, where the solder hasn't fully flown through to this side of the board, it has on that side, but not on that side, well, it just looks a little bit untidy. So I'm just going to go around quickly and just touch up those little bits. That just tidies it up. The component finder would have us do some of the ICs next, but I'd rather get all the passives done first. Over on this side of the board we have two resistor networks to fit. That's these things. And if you look at the silk screen, the last pin there for each of them is contained within a separate square of its own. On the resistor network itself, the pin to the left hand side here as I'm holding it, there's a dot on that. Need to line up that dot with that square. 
so it has to go in that way around. Next up then I want to do the ferry beads. There's two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven of them. Well, that's all the passives done, bar those two missing capacitors. I'll do these two crystals next. 24.576 megahertz. That one goes in there. And then the other one is 16.9344. That goes in there. Let's do some sockets. Now, I'm sure the original Prelude probably didn't have anything in a socket. Well, maybe other than the crystal chip itself. But we do have sockets here for everything. So I think we may as well use them. And considering that the other guys have been having some issues, I can foresee me needing to swap things in the future. So best just to use the sockets. I want to be absolutely sure that these are sitting flat though. So we'll just do one pin and push on the socket from the other side to make sure that it is flat against the board. Do the same on the other side actually. Just check that it is sitting flat and yeah, it seems to be. Lots of pins to do. Well, that's the prelude done, or as far as I can take it for now anyway. Just waiting on those two capacitors to arrive. Hopefully we're here tomorrow. And I do need to fit something here that will eventually be used to mount the MPEGA card. But speaking of this, we do need to populate this board. I'm going to start with the four surface mount ICs, which is those things. And I suppose we'll start with the more awkward ones. This chip in particular. PLCC type package. That I need to mount surface. And it needs to go on. Something like that. So I think I have it aligned there pretty well. But we'll just go in with some flux. Just at one of the pins here. And I just moved the chip. But let's not get too worried. So we'll just put a bit of solder on the iron. I'm going to grab the chip anyway, so it is going to move again. I think that's pretty well aligned. Let's try and get that one pin down. Yeah, I think that's right. So we'll spin it around, do the same in the opposite corner. Just going to hold the chip again. And try and get that leg stuck down. That's it. Then let's take a good look around the chip and make sure we're happy with how it's sitting. And yeah, it all seems good, so let's just get the rest of those pins down. Probably my least favourite type of surface mount soldering this. I think this is definitely the trickiest. One down. Let's do this one next. Next up then is these two. Let's do this one. And it needs to go on like that. Okay, let's do the passives. I'm referring back to the component locator. First ones it wants us to do are these. 100 NF. I'm going to need some tweezers. And I suppose the trickiest one here is going to be the capacitor at position C6. Just because it is so close to the Mac. Yeah, that wasn't too bad actually. I'll do C1 next. And you don't need to watch me do all of these. I'll come back when we're finished. Okay then, last piece of the puzzle pie. Or well, last piece for now because... We're still missing those two cups for the prelude itself. And we need to think of a means of attaching this to the prelude. But the last thing for now is this. The crystal. 14.31818 megahertz. That goes there. Now 
Well, it's a new day and we have two one microfarad capacitors to finish off this build. But to get these so quickly, I ordered them from Amazon. Now, not exactly the first place you'd think of when looking for components, but they do stock various bits and pieces, although the jury's maybe out on the quality of it. So I thought what we'd do is just test both of these using our little multi-function tester here. So if I stick that in there and press start, and yeah, okay, it's reading it as 987 nanofarad. These are one microfarad or 1000 nanofarad, 5%. So yeah, that seems to be within spec. What about this one? And yeah, that's just the same. So certainly not the first place you'd think of ordering them. Certainly not the cheapest place to order them either. The bag of 100 cost me £5. Which I suppose actually isn't bad, considering. And done. But how are we going to attach this? So I think the idea is that this card would sit on top of the Prelude. So that you can see the nice text on it. But because we've put sockets here, and by the time we put the chips in there, it's going to have to sit off the board quite a bit to clear everything. And I don't think I have pins long enough to do that with. I suppose we could fit it to the underside, sort of like that. But then I don't get to see the nice text on it. And since I do have a window in my case, I think it would be nice to, to see the writing, wouldn't it? Prelude M Pegot. I've got an idea. If I put this 40 pin socket on the bottom of the Prelude, then if I do the same on the MPEGA card, and so with the Prelude installed in the case like that, I think I could get the MPEGA card mounted vertically like that. And we can just run a short IDE ribbon cable between them. But it's currently covered in flux and therefore covered in sticky fingerprints. Let's see if we can make it look any better. Just the usual method though, IPA and the cotton buds. That's about as clean as I can get it, which is to say isn't very clean. Unfortunately, using IPA and cotton buds, all you're really doing is smudging the flux around the board. You're just pushing it around the board, really. It's very hard to get it all off. The underside in particular is still a mess. I really could use an ultrasonic cleaner, but it'll do for now. Let's get it populated, let's get it tested. And we may as well start at the start, U1, that is a 74F74. This one. Of the four gals, I'm not actually sure what order these go in. These were very kindly provided by Screamo, and he programmed all these. He's labeled them one, two, three, and four, but is it one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four? I'll have to go ask that question, although we can't put the crystal chip in. And supposedly it is just as straightforward as one, two, three, four. A little bit of IPA should clean off the writing on that. And we're done. So just before we do jump in and test the Prelude, let's take a listen to the Amiga as it is, playing an MP3 and playing a bit of audio from a game in Scum VM. For the MP3 playback, we're gonna be using Amiga Amp, but in order to play an MP3, or indeed play the audio from Scum VM, or indeed several of these titles here, the Amiga needs a thing called AHI. And I suppose you can think of AHI as something similar to the RTG for the graphics here, 
RTG is retargetable graphics. Not actually sure what AHI stands for. Audio hardware interface or something, I'm not sure. But they work in a similar way. And so much as Workbench here for its graphics, well, it's retargeting that from the Amiga's chipset onto the graphics card that's built into the Pi Storm. That is allowing us to have Workbench here in a higher resolution, more colors. AHI Audio does a similar sort of thing in so much as it allows these Workbench applications to target their audio directly to a third party sound card. Or they can indeed target their audio directly to Paula, although in that instance they are limited to software decoding and to the limitations obviously of Paula herself. In fact, when you first install AHI, let me just show you it here quickly. It can be found in Prefs once you get it installed. And it is the latest version of it that I have here, version 6. But when you first install it, you get the music unit and then you get four other sound units. I'm not actually sure what uses the music unit, because everything, as far as I can tell, including Amiga Amp, uses these units. Amiga Amp is currently set to use unit 0. Effectively, what they do is just allow you to assign different audio settings for those four different units, or I suppose you could sort of call them like logical sound cards. But when you first install it, unit zero here, Paula, it will be set to 8000 Hz. And at that frequency, well, you can appreciate that audio sounds a bit crap. Now because I do have the Pi Storm in here, I have plenty of processing power and we can tap into that and crank that frequency up more or less as far as we can get it for Paula anyway. It does go right up to 27,429 but that just seems like a weird number so I typically set it to 22,050 hertz. And when it is set like that well, MP3 playback is a lot better. Although it's still not quite CD quality, is it? And in fact, it might be slightly more noticeable if we take a listen to something in Scum VM. Full Thrall. So while the audio isn't bad, Whenever I smell asshole, I think of marine. it does sound Still just a little bit muddled, it could definitely it be clearer. Asphalt. And the first thing I saw when I woke up was her face. She said she'd fix my bike, free, no strings attached. I should have known then that things are never that simple. Yeah. When I think of Marine, I think of two things. Asphalt and trouble. And in fact, just one other thing quickly before we do install the Prelude. Let's see how much CPU time it is using to play an MP3. In fact, I have three copies of this song here, Cathode Ray Gun. Can't play any of these or the YouTube copyright police will come after me. But I can play this song created by Momentum. I do have his permission to use this and I've encoded three copies of it here. This first one at 128k, next one 192 and the last one at 320. We can load this bit of software, PM or Performance Monitor. The figure that we are more interested in is this figure in the bottom right. That's the real-time CPU usage. This figure here is just the average. Well, it's hovering there. Sort of about 11, 12%. Right, let's try the 192K version.
and CPU usage now has jumped closer to 15% maybe, although it is fluctuating quite a bit. Seems to be spending most of this time though about 14-15%. So what about the 320k version? And then we're seeing an increase to about 19% there at most, I and mean, that was 20%, 21. But it's spending most of this time about 16, 18, 19% in and around that. So let's install this. But we will install this, first of all, by itself, without the MPEGA card. Let's just see what this can do on its own. And I'm going to put this card into this slot here, just directly below the bracket that I made for the GBS. Okay, I have the audio capture directly onto the Prelude, the native Amiga output, the native Paula sound. It doesn't automatically get rooted through the Prelude. The audio signals are not available on the Zaro slot. Rather, what you can do is run a cable from your audio output to the line in of the Prelude, and that will allow it to pass through. But for now, I haven't done that. Rather, the Paula output is just coming to these speakers. But the bit that we're interested in, the Prelude output, it's going to be captured directly. And why is this not booting? I am very confused. The Amiga is seeing all the expansion cards okay. But for some reason it's not seeing the hard drive now. Why? Well, it's booted now, but that was really weird. Reseated the Prelude, and then it would start to boot. It does a reset because this is Workbench 3.9, so it set patches and then does a reset. But when it did that, it just dropped to the kickstart screen again. I had to soft reset the machine myself, and then it booted into Workbench. What is that all about? But anyway, we need to install the drivers for the Prelude. And this is really simple, because thanks to the guys on A1K forums, there's just one package you need to download, extract, and install. And I have that package stored in here. It is this one, Prelude Software Bundle V4. I will link this down below in the video's description. Now, obviously, you will need to have AHI installed. That is the package for it there as well, that one. I'll link that in the video's description as well. Although that package, that is for version 6, and you need to install that manually. It is really straightforward. In fact, just let me show you very quickly. If I extract that onto the RAM disk. Essentially, all you need to do is go into that user folder and copy the contents of all of these to the corresponding folder on your DHO drive, your system drive. And then for the MP3 playback that you've seen there, we were using Amiga AMP, that's the latest version of it there, the LHA file for it. I'll link that in the video's description as well. There's no installer for that, all you do is extract the LHA file wherever you want to store the software, and it's all just sitting there ready to go. But let's install our software for the Prelude. So we'll extract that onto the RAM disk. Finish with Dopus. Go into the RAM disk, there it is there, and install. Proceed, proceed. We are installing. Yes, we will change the AHI preferences. This does it for you automatically. And that's it. It does require a reboot. So let's take a quick look in those AHI settings. What did it do? You can see here now we have two options for the Prelude, 16-bit stereo or Hi-Fi 16-bit stereo. I'm not really sure what the difference is, but I suppose the main thing to take away here is that our frequency is now up at what you'd probably call CD audio quality, 44,100 hertz. And I assume that's the same for all the units. Yes. So let's try our MP3 playback now. 
And I suppose we'll bring up the performance monitor as well. And granted, this still will be software decoding because we don't have this installed. This is the hardware decoder. Although there is a problem with this and I'll come to that in a minute. But with the software decoder, let's just load the three versions of our song again. And let's see what it sounds like and how much CPU time it's using. 128k first. And it sounds fantastic. Although the CPU usage has jumped considerably. And presumably that's because we are now running it at a considerably higher audio frequency. Does sound fantastic though. What about the 182k version? So again we are seeing a further increase in CPU usage. But the music sounds crystal clear. 320k. And our CPU usage there is up in around 25-30%. But bear in mind, we're running the Pi Storm here with EMU 68, probably sitting at around 800 MIPS or so. So, you know, 30% of 800 MIPS is, I don't know, what about 2,500, 300 MIPS. And that is sort of what's required here to software decode a 320k mp3 at 44,000 hertz there really is no chance you'll be able to achieve this using real classic hardware but what about in scum vm does our game sound any better and yeah i would say it does The sort of fizzling sound that was there before, that's, that's the gone. It definitely is a lot crisper. The thick smell of asphalt. And the first thing I saw when I woke up was her face. She said she'd fix my bike. Free. No strings attached. I should have known then that things are never that simple. So from that point of view, the Prelude is definitely a win yeah. for me. When I think of Marine, I think of two things. Because it is for games asphalt. like this that I really want that in there. Rip Burger, you're dumber than dirt. But what about this thing? So as I said, I want to install this mounted like so. So that I can see the nice text on it through the window on the side of the case. So that will go there. And then with some creative folding of that ribbon cable, that's going to sit like that. And I came up with these little brackets here that hopefully will hold it. There we are. I think that looks pretty cool. What I might do is just put a little dab of hot glue just on the bottom of that on those brackets. Just to make sure that it can't move. But it'll be okay like that for now. As I said though there is a problem with this. So let me show you what that is. If this thing boots. Well this time it booted first time in the workbench. The oddities of an Amiga. They really are strange old beasts aren't they? But we need to install some additional software to get the MPEG card working. Or well should I say we need to install an additional library for it. It is actually included within that Prelude installer. Although it didn't install itself automatically for us. But I wonder, is that because I didn't have the MPEGA card on the Prelude when we first installed that? Not sure, but let's just install it manually. It's really straightforward. So into Dopus, I'll just extract that archive again onto the RAM disk. Now if we browse into that extracted drawer, it's found in here in libs. And it's this folder here or this drawer here, MHI. We need to copy that into DHO 
and the libs folder on there. I'll copy that across. And then just let me check something. Yeah, within that MHI folder, there's a copy of the MPEGIT library, but you also need a copy of the Prelude library in there. Granted that Prelude library does exist here in the main libs folder, or libs drawer, sorry. But another copy of it needs to be in that MHI drawer for it to work properly. And now with that, like that, we can go into the preferences for Amiga AMP. Under decoder, we can turn on MHI support and we can select the MHI library. And that is it. That should be hardware MP3 decoding enabled. Problems though, and as Gadget UK found out with his, it seems we got a bad batch of MPEG decoding chips. Because while it will decode an MP3, I'll just load all three of these again just to show you the CPU usage and how much it has dropped. Because while it will decode the MP3, well, it sounds terrible. You can hear like a weird noise in the background of the music. It's like an electronic interference noise or something. It sounds absolutely awful. But also the music is definitely playing back slower. In fact, it almost sounds like somebody's added a cymbal into the song. On every kick of the drum. You can hear like a strange twangy sort of sound. Sounds absolutely awful. Replacement MPEG chips are on the way, and apparently that will fix it. Chris managed to get one just to test with, and it did sort his problem. So hopefully it will fix it for us as well. But putting aside the fact that it sounds awful, you can see that CPU usage is now considerably lower. If we just take it straight up to the 320k version, Previously, this was taking about 30% of the CPU's time. Now it's only looking for about 9-10%. So yeah, it is still using a fair bit of CPU runtime to decode that 320k MP3. You know, consider again that this is the Pi Storm, AMU68, so 800 odd MIPS. If it's using 10%, it's using 80 MIPS of processing power to decode this. You would need one really fast 060 Amiga to get anywhere near those sort of numbers. One thing I'm not sure of though is when we get the proper MPEG decoder chip, would that maybe affect this further would it maybe further reduce the cpu usage i'm not sure probably not to be honest but it's something that we can figure out once i get that and then the other problem that i now have is that if i try to run say scum vm again and if i try to load our game again full throttle well, this time the music is there, but there is an intermittent static, just like that. And I honestly have no idea why. The only difference here is the MPEG card. So it's no use like that. Hopefully it is just that dodgy MPEG decoder chip that's causing the problem. Or perhaps maybe there is something else here that I have missed. Because the other guys who have built their cards, yes, they're all having the MPEG decoding issue, but they're not having this problem. And then the last thing that I want to show you is the mixer. This gets installed as part of the Prelude driver pack from A1K forums. And it's just really what you would expect. It has line in, 
and that's just being used as the pass through from the Amiga's native sound output into the Prelude. Auxiliary input 1 and auxiliary input 2. Auxiliary 1 is presented on the back of the Prelude. Auxiliary 2 is presented internally on the Prelude card. I suppose intended for connecting up CD audio. Wave is really just the sound that the Prelude generates itself. Mono, I'm not actually sure what that is. It doesn't seem to affect anything. And in fact, I may as well mute it, just in case there is any noise being added there that we don't need. And master volume, well, that's pretty self-explanatory. And I said we'd do a quick microphone test. The Prelude does have a microphone input on the back of it. Little bit of software here, AHI Recorder. Also by Thomas Wenzel, actually, the creator of the Prelude. So you'd like to think that these two things would work together. But I've been having a bit of a play with this, and I can only get it to record if we set it to Wave and 16-bit. The audio mode, well, we'll select the Prelude 16-bit stereo, and we'll select Microphone Low. Microphone High just seems to blow out the levels using my microphone. Although I can't use my normal Rode lav mic that you're listening to now, the one that I use for recording the videos. Rather, I have to go to a really old microphone I have that has this sort of preamp thing built into it. But we can prepare a file. We'll just save test.wave. You can see the level meter there. Let's see if I can just turn up the gain a little bit. Let's try and record at that. And this is a test of the Prelude sound card microphone input. Close AHI. Jump into Amiga Amp. We can load that WAV file. And this is a test of the Prelude sound card microphone input. And well, I think you'll agree with me that that sort of sounds crap. Although maybe I'm being a little bit harsh, am I, for a 1997 sound card design? Not sure. It does sound very muffled. And even taking a direct audio feed, say from my phone, into the line in, and trying to record that way, well, it is no better. But I don't have a lot of experience recording audio on an Amiga. So if anyone has any other suggestions of maybe how to try and improve it, well, please let me know. Well, there we are, one Prelude sound card up and running in my Amiga 2000. And I suppose the MPEG card, it works as well. It just sounds crap because it's got a dodgy MPEG decoder chip. But when the new chip comes, I'll put out a mini build video, just swapping that over and just to be sure that it does indeed solve our problem. Now yes, you might say that the MPEG decoder chip is sort of surplus to my requirements, since we've got the Pi Storm in there and it has more than enough muscle, as we've seen, to decode a high bitrate MP3 with no issues whatsoever. But in the long run, I do have slightly different plans for this machine, that Pi Storm will eventually be coming out of here. And so when that time comes, I probably will need the hardware decoding capabilities of the MPEG card to continue to play MP3s. Plus it would just annoy me that we have the thing and it doesn't work right. So definitely need to solve that problem. But putting that aside, the Prelude itself, it does sound great playing those scum VM games and indeed some of these other titles. Duke Nukem, for example. So from that point of view, I definitely cannot complain. I think it is a fantastic addition to my Amiga 2000. Overall, it has just lifted the audio quality in these titles. But that's going to be it for this video. So hopefully you enjoyed what you've seen. If you did, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Why not hit subscribe if you haven't done so already? Still plenty more yet to come here on CRG, and I'll see you next time.